and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh. And 2019 was a really good year. The room is closed for the rest of the calendar year. So this is the year to date results for the Stock Swoosh show live trading room calls for all of 2019 from January through December 2020. So Christmas is in the middle of the week and uh, New Year's Eve as well. So I'm closing the room for the rest of the year. So the advanced trader tracking results for 2019 were 549,886. So it was a good year. And I'm gonna go over what advanced risk is as well. Again, I do gaps, nothing but gaps and mostly shorts. Although some of the trains that I called this year were longs, mostly we do the shorts. If you're interested in more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. Um, I usually post on there a lot of videos, webinars, and also my Fox News clips. So earnings season is a great time to trade, and earnings season begins in January 2020. So you have four quarterly earnings seasons, and those are the time when it's good to trade anything anything at all because that's the most of the time when the market has big moves and stocks have big moves but the stocks that we look at the stocks that i like to do are companies that you would know of apple twitter facebook things that you that you use that you know the companies you're familiar with okay so we we watch earnings for lots of different companies but a lot of the stocks that we trade are things that are companies that you know of and they trade with volume so the year started off um, was closed at the beginning of last January as well for the holiday. And the year started off, you know, pretty, pretty good, but was mostly longs, I gotta say. We did a lot of longs in the market. Um, and SWK was a good short. Market was very bullish at the beginning of the year. Um, and then it started to, to drop off pretty much in May. Uh, but like these two big trades here, this was, these were longs in, in January. So the market had a very bullish January. And I get up every morning, I look for stocks that are gapping, and I like to hone in on one, like Twitter was a really good one, and even CARB. So there were two trades, one was a stop, the second trade was a, a positive trade, made up for the first trade's loss. I call this a retake, I teach that in the class as well. But I like to hone in on one stock, one ticker symbol per day. I find that's how I excel, and it also helps me stay focused, especially trading with size. If you're gonna try to make, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars in a trade in just a day trade, you really gotta be focused. And the size varies because the stop varies when I call the trades as well. We did Walmart a bunch of times this year. CVS was another than one that required a retake. DPZ was a really good gap. KHC was a really nice gap as well. WTW, remember that one, HPQ, that was back in February. Again, that's earning season for the first quarter, still earning season. So January is a good time to do the class and learn my system because you'll learn the system right before the earning season, and then you'll be able to get going and trade right away. Cost was a very nice gap. First trade failed, second one was a winner. Stitch fix did not work whatsoever at all. DG worked. First trade loss, second one was a big winner. And also on the days where there's no trades, there wasn't any gaps that met my criteria. So there will be days that it occurs, it's better than losing. So again, I'm very, very picky in what I do. Very picky. Then into the spring here, was a bunch of gaps uh, for the second quarter earnings season. Disney was one of those ones we did a million different times this year for some reason, just ended up gapping a lot this year. Disney had a huge move this year. Uh, mostly they were longs. Disney was one of the big winners actually uh, in the trading room for the year and also the options newsletter. Apple was a big winner. Again, this is earnings season now, second quarter, spring. Apple was a big winner on the 17th. XLNX was a big winner on the 25th. Twitter was a big winner on the 23rd. Facebook was another one, IRBT. Again, a lot of these stocks you've heard of. INTC you've heard of, WDC I'm sure, that was a nice trade. Then getting into May, I remember this gap in Apple, really nice gap in Apple. HLF did not work, two losses in that, it failed. 
I usually will give something two times, maybe three, but I try to stick with two, two times. I give it one retake. Then into May was one of the best months of the year, actually, for, for this year. I remember May. We've had, we had some really nice numbers in May. Baidu was a beautiful, beautiful move in May. SWKS was a big winner in May. Tiva, Baidu, did a couple of times. KSS was another one. Low, again, big winner. Baidu again. JWN, QQQs on the 23rd. Uh, Domo, Baidu didn't work this day. AEO worked this day. Again, summer has third quarter earnings. So there are gaps to trade in the summer. There are day trades to do in the summer. Many active traders think, oh, the summer is slow. No. If you get good gaps, it could be in July. It could be in August. It could be at any time. It depends what's going on with the stock. We trade gaps on news. We trade gaps on earnings. It could be sector gaps. It could be with the market. DPZ was another one here that needed a retake. First trade failed. Second one was a big winner. Goldman Sachs was a winner there on the 16th. A lot of nice gaps in here. We did Netflix a few times this year, but we didn't we didn't do it as much as I don't think we did last year. Uh, Netflix was a winner here. AMAT. UPS was a big winner. Tut was a loser. Tessa was a big winner. Starbucks was a winner. We did that a bunch of times this year. T2, big winner. Nice gap, UAA. And then into August, and again, this is third quarter earnings season in August. We're picking and choosing what we're doing, trying to look for the good ones. That's what I do every morning, trying to hone it down. And one, if I can, if I see two good gaps, I might watch two things at the same time, but I try to just watch one if possible. And usually it's so clear. Foot Locker was a really good gap here, BMW. This day in here, the SPY just did not work right. Didn't work at all. Two losses in the SPY. First loss in target, second trade worked. So that was that was a day where it's retakes, two retakes. Alter was a nice winner on the 30th. Looking back on the year again, FDX, done that a bunch of times. Spy again, traded the market a lot, a lot. And again, qualifying the gaps. If there's no trades, don't trade. If there's no good gaps, I should say. Um, HPQ was a nice one. Netflix there on the 9th. Debbie Day, beautiful gap on that one. Adobe, first trade failed, second one was a winner. Goldman went there again. JNJ &J was a good one. UPS was a nice gap. MCD was huge, 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 huge. Beautiful big move in that. That even followed through for the, for the option. That just was a megalodon move for that stock. Really big winner on the 22nd. Kind of those kinds of days you, you remember and you, you learn a lot from those too because even that, 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 that put continued. But I mean, again, that had a big move on that day, which was the 22nd. Twitter, big move. Nice trade. Eme took two shots. BYND was just, did not work on the 29th. So this one, four times I grabbed this one, and it did not work at all. Grub worked, though, that day. TXRH worked that day, and a second trade in Grub. But BYND has provided a lot of winners this year, mostly with the options letter, but just did not cooperate there on the 29th. Actually, I think it's fallen off ever since then. Uh, Yum, three nice winners on the 30th. Facebook was a winner on the 31st. Hughes and the Spy again, usually doing them in conjunction. There's MCD again. Then into November, again, fourth quarterly earnings season. There's still earnings in October, November. Disney again, bunch of more trades in the market. Big trade in Disney on the 13th. Disney was one of those big winners this year. Cisco was a nice trade. Amount was a nice trade and easy to trade too. M2 winners. HD was a winner. Target was a big winner. Low did not cooperate. Don't know why, but Target worked and Low didn't cooperate that day. Macy's did not work here. Lazy Boy didn't work here. E-Trade worked here and Foot Locker was a solid win in the 22nd. And then getting into the beginning of December, Great start to December. Three nice winners, three big winners on the 6th of December in the market. And Apple. Uh, what were some other ones in here? CVS was a winner. Netflix didn't work out on the 10th. Cost was a nice winner. Starbucks, the market, Oracle, the FDX from the 18th. And then a very active last two days in here, the 19th and the 20th. DRI, first trade stopped, and that went on to work. I didn't retake it. 
I looked at that as so you gotta be kidding me. Mew stopped in the first trade. Second trade worked. G dot was a winner. Late trade in G dot. 1220 was Apple. First trade failed. Second one worked as a scalp. Q's worked and KMX was the nice short on the 20th. So an advanced trader risk is an average of between $2,000 and $2,500 because when you're trying to size yourself and sometimes these trades hit within seconds or a minute, you've got to just get in. It's I think it's more important once you get to a certain level where you got to make sure you get the trade, okay? And if you're new and you're trying to size yourself into the trade quickly, I say take 100 shares and then add on it because what you don't want to do if you're new is oversize yourself. I'm going to start to focus more in 2020 on different levels of trading of risk, but but you know, it's the idea is for you to grow and to build your risk and build the momentum and build your knowledge and your experience and your confidence over time. You start with where you're at right now. If you can only risk $100 a trade, then that's what you're risking. Um, but the goal, the goal is, is something that you want to keep in mind all the time, obviously. And that keeps you motivated too. So if you're thinking about trading for a living, if you want to work for yourself, you can trade and work for yourself and you can do it from home, which is really nice. Uh, and and the also is nice and the market is only open from 9.30 to 4 and the day trades, all these trades that I call, the trading room only opens in the morning and we're open around 8.30. I start talking between 9 and 9.30 and then we're usually done trading by 10, 10, 15, 10.30. I find the days that I'm trading late or, or I have the room open late or I'm calling trades in the afternoon or I'm trading late are the are more difficult days. So while there are days where I will do afternoon trades, to be honest with you, it's better to be down in the morning. And when I went back and looked at that at that one, I said to myself, gosh, the KMX, 16 cents off the low at 9.43. It's the morning is where it's at, people. And I'm going to remind myself in 2020 of that. The afternoon can provide good setups. And I do teach the one setup that I do in the Golden Gap course of the late day setup. But I don't think it's something that people should be doing every day. People tend to get money back in the afternoon. And every once in a while we'll do it. It was a good trade setup in the afternoon if the morning trade didn't work or if I see an extra setup for something to go again, you know. But I think it's really important to know what to do before you trade. So entrance into my live trading room where you would get all these calls, there's a requirement for that and a prerequisite and is to take my class and learn my system and the class is called the Golden Gap course. So this is a prerequisite in order to join my trading room. The class is January 11th and 12th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Cost of the class is $64.99 US dollars. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it because it's online. I'm also doing the trends course, which is January 14th is a combo deal. You save $500 if you do them both together, noon to three, if you want to sign up for them both. And then I have an options newsletter subscription. If you're interested in the options trades, you can email me about those. $59.99 is the options newsletter. And you can, if you, if you want to do, if you want to do day trades, you have to take the class to join the room. If you want to do options, you can join the newsletter. But you're not going to know the system unless you take the Golden Gap course. So I think it's very, very important to know the system in order to day trade accurately. And that is why I have the class. Go back here. That's why I have this class, the Golden Gap course. That's why this is a prerequisite to join the room. So all of the trades that I called that I just reviewed, all of these trades in here in this, in this video, we're called in the live trading room. You have to have done this class to join the live trading room, okay? So any questions from anyone about anything at all, feel free to email me, feel free to call me. Uh, 2020 is right around the corner. You wanna make a fresh start in 2020 if you did not have a good year. If 2019 was not a good year for you, then you're gonna wipe it off and make a fresh start for 2020. Set the tone, set the mindset for yourself to do well next year. In fact, set the tone right now. Take the, take the positive energy right now. Take it into the year. Take, set the tone of what you desire and want 
with your trading for 2020. Have it in your mind. Imagine right now the money that you want to make, your goals for 2020. Take it right, right then, take the energy right into the year. Don't even wait. Don't say, don't wait till January 1st or New Year's Eve or January 2nd. No, right now, right now, today. The sooner the better. Make a fresh start. Make a fresh start right now for yourself so you can have a positive year for 2020. If you're interested in learning a solid strategy and system, my Golden Gap course is it. What I do is very unique, and I have a, I, I'm, I'm very talented with what I do, and I have a great skill set. And so you learn the information in the class, and then you gain the skill set by being in the trading room with me and seeing how I analyze the gaps on a daily basis in the market. So email me if you'd like to sign up, melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Have a great holiday, everyone.